Hi, it's Dan from Kaizen Sports and today we're sharing five socially distanced games that require no equipment at all. We know that you'd rather be doing other things than planning. We know that your time is important as well. That's why we've done all the research for you. Each of these games has been specifically designed for the current circumstances, following social distancing guidelines, requiring no equipment and are fun, safe and adaptable. Without any further ado, let's jump into the action so that you can get on with your lives. Here are the top five games. Dinosaur Island takes literally 10 seconds to set up and is perfect for both small and large groups. One child starts in the middle and guards Dinosaur Island while the rest of the tourists fan out in a circle around them. The mission for the tourists is to creep onto Dinosaur Island or within two meters of the T-Rex following social distancing guidelines. The first tourist to do so is the winner and they become the T-Rex in the next game. There is a twist to this game though. If the T-Rex does see you moving, you need to go back to the point of which you started and then recommence your quest to get to Dinosaur Island but you are invisible to the T-Rex if you're still or holding a balance whilst they look at you. Dinosaur Island promotes fundamental movements, including balance, reaction time, as well as change of speed. And for the T-Rex, twisting and turning movements, as well as quick decision-making, having to assess which tourist poses the biggest threat. In Statue Sculptor Rock, you're going to get into teams of three and nominate a statue, a sculptor, and a rock. The statue's going to strike a random pose and hold it, the sillier the better. The rock's going to have their eyes closed, so they've got no idea the pose that the statue's made. And the sculptor has the difficult job of having 30 seconds to explain how the rock needs to move their hands, their legs, and the rest of their body in order to correctly mimic the pose made by the statue. Once the 30 seconds is up, the rock opens their eyes to see how close they were to mimicking the statue. This can easily be transformed into a full class competition as well. Children work in pairs, a sculptor and a rock, whilst one child stands at the front of the class being the statue for every sculptor to try and follow. Whichever rock is closest to mimicking the statue at the end of the 30 seconds is the winner. Both variations encourage children to explore using different parts of their body, as well as refining those leadership and listening skills. In the game Numbers, children move around their bubble and listen for your command. Each number you call out corresponds to how many body parts they need touch in the floor. For example, if you call out two, the children need to ensure that just two body parts are touching the floor. So you might just stand with two feet on the ground. So award points for unique combinations. For example, if someone's got their right hand and right foot touching the floor, or you might award points just for general creativity. After calling out each number, give children 10 seconds. This gives them time to explore and experiment with different ideas. This game promotes creativity, balance, peer assessment and very quick decision making skills. Next up we have Dice Roll, and don't be fooled because you don't actually even need a dice for this one. You're going to assign an action to each one of the six numbers, so for example one might be a press up, two might be a star jump, three might be to do a one legged balance and so on. Children play in one versus one groups and wait for you to call out a number. The first person to carry out the action for the number that you call out is the winner. Once the children get the hang of this game, ask one of them to come to the front and assign six new movements to each of the numbers. This game develops reaction time, memory recall, and some very creative movement pathways. And we finish with the Wild West. The person in the middle, the sheriff, 
aims to splat the players in the surrounding circle. So if the sheriff points at you and says splat, you have to squat down, whilst the players on their immediate left and right fire a splat at each other. The first person to be splatted loses and is out of the game. You then stand back up and the game continues. Keep playing until you have a winner. As an alternative to somebody just being sat out the game, you might give them a few fun challenges to try and complete so that they can earn their way back into the game. Each of these games have been deliberately designed with you in mind, aiming to keep you, your colleagues, and your pupils safe. Thank you for watching. If you found these ideas helpful, then please share them with others so that we can continue supporting the PE community. And as always, make sure that you like and subscribe so that you don't miss next week's video. I'll see you then.